We all recognise the big guns of the whiskey world. Glenn Fiddich, McAllen, Johnny Walker. They might get the spotlight in Hollywood, but some of the best whiskies you'll ever taste are out of the public eye and unknown to most. Here are my top three whiskies you may never even have heard of. First of all, there's a simple reason why these whiskies don't have such a high profile, but it's got absolutely nothing to do with their quality. Each one is owned by a much bigger company with large portfolios of brands and who produce huge volumes of some of the best-selling blended whiskies in the world. That means the whiskies from some of the distilleries that these companies own, they're used primarily to go into creating these big name blends and they just don't get much focus or attention as single malts. Thankfully, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is able to source single cask whiskey directly from many distilleries that you don't often see with their own name on the bottle. We love Dal Ewan Distillery at the Society and so far we've released more than 170 single casks from this lesser spotted Speyside single malt. The main reason it's not wide unknown is that it's owned by whisky industry giant Diageo which of course produces the world's biggest selling blended Scotch whisky, Johnny Walker. So yes, you've guessed it, the bulk of Dal Ewan's output goes into creating Johnny Walker so the chances are you've actually enjoyed Dal Ewan's whisky, just not on its own. That's a real shame because it's a fantastically characterful dram. Ewan from our whisky team prizes it for its fruity, full-bodied profile, which goes well with maturation in any cask type. And it's great both as single casks or for blending. I've got a dram here of Society Cask 41.177 Dancing with Summer, which really is a rarity. It's a small batch release where we took two ex-bourbon hogsheads and put them into different directions, going into a first fill PX hogshead and a first fill Oloroso hogsheads before marrying them together and bottling them. It's 16 years old. It's just incredibly rich and it's something that you're not going to see anywhere else. Okay, so unsung hero number two and we're staying on Speyside to sing the praises of Balmenich. It's a historic distillery dating back to 1824, so it's actually the same vintage as Macallan, Glenlivet and Cardew, but it's never been sold as a single malt. It used to be owned by the forerunner of Diageo, the Distillers Company Limited, and contributed then to the Johnny Walker and Krabby's blends. It's now owned by International Beverage Holdings and it's a key component to their Hanky Bannister blend with Diageo still an external customer as well. Balmenich has a huge appeal to blenders for adding character and weight to their blends and that's really the reason it's not seen as a single malt. It's also all the more reason to seek it out as a single cask bottling. It's got a heavier, almost meaty character thanks to a rapid distillation with little reflux and the use of copper worm tubs. It does particularly well in X sherry casks, such as this bottle of cask number 48164 Dark Fruit Feedback Loop, which matured in a bourbon hogshead and then went into a first fill X Oloroso butt. Let's pour a wee dram of this one. 17 years old and it's really a rich, dense, fruity dram and you can see why it's highly prized by blenders for the weight in it. Just fantastic. So if you've not tried Balmenich from a single cask, you've got to give it a shot. My third pick of lesser known distilleries is Ardmore near Huntley in Aberdeenshire. It's actually enjoying something of a higher profile these days and you can now find it on many supermarket shelves under its own label but it still feels a little under celebrated to me and since visiting the distillery a few years ago for Unfiltered magazine I've always had a soft spot for Ardmore. This one is owned by Beam Suntory and has been a key component of the popular Teacher's Blend for more than a hundred years. In fact, the distillery was built in 1898 
by Adam Teacher, the son of the blender, William Teacher. It's also that rarity, a peated whiskey from a Highland distillery, although they also do an unpeated expression known as Ard Lair. It now makes up about 50% of the distillery's production and the Ardmore legacy that you can find on the supermarket shelves is a blend of peated and unpeated whisky. Until 2002, the stills were coal fired and although it's now entered a more modern era, there's still something really historic and wonderfully old school about Ardmore. When I visited, they were talking about opening a visitor center, but as far as I can tell, it's yet to happen. We love Distillery 66 at the Scotch Malt Whisky Society for its robust character and its ability to inspire the tasting panel to some fantastic names such as this bottle of cask number 66.245 F1 Racetrack Barbecue. This one is 15 years old. Let's crack it open. It's come from an ex-bourbon hogshead into an, a first fill ex Oloroso hogshead and it's definitely got that smoky highland peat robustness that makes this distillery one of our favorites in single cask form so if you haven't tried some of these lesser known stars i urge you give them a go you might not recognize the name but the whiskey will blow you away i guarantee it